second row is better. Because I won't have a bigger know, crick in my neck. Oh, yeah, there is like a sit on the front row. Yeah, I think that is a little better. You know, fuzzies, right? Yeah, we that microphone on. You don't have to speak into it, just around it. It's pretty sensitive. Yep. Interesting. He has some more interest. Thank you. What's that? I said you have some more interest. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, cool. I've had training. <laughs> Can't y'all, always hit the sandbox, but I have had training. <laughs> you don't always hit the sandbox. Says y'all been together for a minute. So. Uh, anyway, all right. So, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Rob Mazak. And so I wanted to, to take a little bit of time to talk about hypnosis, right? And so when I, when I mention the word hypnosis, what comes to your mind? Anybody? When, 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 when I bring that topic up, what do Quacking you guys like a duck when you don't want to, that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, Stage okay. hypnosis. Okay. There you go. I think a past okay, life. Go. Yeah. Okay. Past life's a big thing. Okay. Yeah. I think you can use it to bring out what you already have. Very good. Like Very good. If, like if you have courage hidden inside, you could use hypnotism to maybe bring that out. Yeah, all good points. Very good, right? So I'm not going to make anybody quack like a duck. We're not going to do that, right? So it's interesting. So those uh, stage hypnosis people, um, the reason that they're successful at doing what they do is because they're, they've are they been trained to, to figure out who the suggestible people are, right? And so I'm not saying that what ha- happens is not real. That's not anything close to what I do, right? And so <laughs> I, <laughs> I will... I will, I will uh, follow that on by saying I was trained in a, in, in a modality. It's not mine, right? And so the modality, the, the, the procedure or method that I was trained in was this, uh, developed by Dolores Cannon. I don't know if anybody's heard about Dolores Cannon. He's shaking his head. Yes. Um, so Dolores Cannon um, pioneered this over like 45 years or so. Have you read any of your, her books by any chance? Oh, my goodness, you should. Right. Anyway, and so. She's got like 19. I would start with the like, convoluted universe or the volunteer souls. I think I think the volunteer souls is in the convoluted universe. But even if you go to YouTube and look at and, and pull up volunteer souls, it's really cool. We're going to address that here shortly. All right. But um, anyway, so the purpose behind, I think she just liked hypnosis, my understanding. She, she didn't have gifts. She didn't want psychic. She went, I think she kind of came into them towards the end. But what she, what she, what she did is all over the world, as she did these procedures, these uh, sessions, she started piecing together uh, patterns, right? And started looking, because everybody around the world was was bringing forth a lot of the same thing. So she's looking at trends. Anyway, so the purpose behind this particular type of hypnosis is a lot about what you were talking about. I think you mentioned it. But the idea behind this hypnosis is to really, in short, we're gonna stretch it out a little bit, but in short is to connect with, um, the source or your higher self or your spirit guides, whoever decides they're going to answer the questions. And I ask the questions and they answer through you. And then there's also a, a healing component as well. So we're going to address that a little bit further, right? Does somebody mention past lives? Who was that? You did, right? Okay. So um, this particular hypnosis is really fun because um, you you really get to know the client and myself really get to know each other. So the whole process to develop trust is really to sit down and learn about you, right? To start at day one to now and and just bring up everything. Talk about the questions you've prepared, right? And the questions are usually, I tell people, they're questions like you would ask God if you could get an answer. Those kind of questions we're talking about, right? Anything, I have had some of the craziest questions, right? Yeah, if you can't imagine, you know, they want to know if they were, if they were, you know, had lives on other planets, you know, were they alien before, whatever, right? That's not so far fetched, though, by the way, actually. Uh, anyway, so we spend uh, anywhere between an hour and two hours really just drilling into who you are. And, and the reason for that, it, it helps build their rapport, but it also gives me a little bit more background as I'm asking the questions, because you're not going to remember them, right? And so if, I can carry on, I can, I can work with the answer and work, wiggle it around and maybe ask different questions or, you know, it's easier to dialogue with, with whom we connected with if, if I have more background about you, right? 
And so the, the process of this is that, right? We sit down for a little bit, but then the induction is real short. It's about maybe 10 minutes at most. And then we pop into a past life regression. And so does everybody believe in past lives or reincarnation, understand what that is? Yes? Kinda, right? I guess that's a yes. Everybody's good with that, right? Okay, so. And so um, the, uh, the past life regressions, I can usually get through uh, two to three of them, depending on how much detail you have, right? And so if you've never had a past life regression, you should have one. Have you had one? Yes. <laughs> Standard. Yeah. There used to be a guy in Houston that was a specialist, Joe, uh, not Joe Nichols. Forgot his name. I'm sure he's passed. David. David, yeah. William <clears throat> David, maybe. Yeah. But tremendous, many lifetimes. You know, that was his, that was his link. Anyway. Yeah. Past life, past life, watching, looking at past lives is really cool because um, it, it really talks about what you're carrying over that not necessarily what you need to own anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. And exactly. I mean, that's probably the easiest way to describe that. And sometimes it's because we have to, we do have to learn what it's like to be on the other side of what we may have done in another life, right? Um, so, uh, like, for example, the last one I remembered for myself, right, that I, I've done, I did, I should say, uh, I was not the good guy. I was an SS officer in Auschwitz, right, in charge of the gas chamber. So, guess what part of my karma is? I, I, I carry asthma and bronchitis and <laughs> You know, right? It makes sense, right? But yeah. I didn't even realize that until I, yeah, until until I did work through some of that stuff. So, so it does help kind of bring some of that down because I don't necessarily have to own it, right? Oh yeah, let right? It go. Because when you come, when you do other lives, you're not necessarily the good person. Sometimes you got to be the bad guy, right? It is. Sometimes you're male, female, animal, bird, whatever, right? But anyway, uh, it, it is really cool. So, but you will carry over things a lot of people don't even realize they're carrying these fears over. My, my, my stepson was a, um, turns out that he was a firefighter that died in the South, South Tower of 9-11. Hmm. For the longest time, he was afraid of going up dark stairs and open flame. And his mother's like, I don't know where this didn't come. Yeah, and so, obvious. Right, and so the thing that was nice about that is once we helped him realize that and show him a picture of who that person was, and he's like, it helped resolve a lot of that. And so it helps you work. Through. Anyway, that, that's, that's a really key piece. But something about doing that past life regression helps bring you down to the right level. So basically, there's four levels of consciousness. Basically, I mean, there's a lots of them, right? But this is beta. So alpha is more what you do in meditation or mindfulness, like watching TV or games or something that helps focus you, right? And then theta level is the one that you, right before you go to sleep, this is where your dreams happen. This is where all that stuff comes in. So at least twice as you go to sleep and as you wake up, you will pass through that dream state. So if you have a lot of dreams at night, guess what? You're waking up a lot. <laughs> mm, right? That makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't have he any sleep dreams. sleeps sound at night. Well, that not everybody dreams, sense. but I'm just saying, but that's where it would happen, right? And so, uh, and then Delta is asleep. And so the process of hypnosis in almost every case is to get you to the theta level and keep you there, right? And so then your conscious mind is out of the equation, right? Because your conscious mind is simply the trainer for your conscious, your subconscious, right? Your subconscious runs 90% of what you do because it's programmed, right? <laughs> right? Boy, is it ever. Right, exactly. And the problem is the program that's running is not always the message that we need to keep putting out. Right. But 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 th there is beauty in it, because guess what? You learn to walk. You don't have to relearn it because it's hardwired. Right. When you drive somewhere, how many times do you, do you like for, not remember half the journey? Right. Because you don't have to do that anymore. However, if you've had a lot of trauma, a lot of things have happened to you, lousy relationships, you keep attracting the same lousy relationships, the same problems, because that's the Program comfort day. zone. Right. Whether it's comfortable or not, that's what your your mind thinks is where it belongs, right? Because that's what's going on. So, so the purpose of most hypnosis is even the ones that just simply look at like smoking or weight control is to is to is to put new suggestions, new programming into the subconscious where you're not necessarily able to do it by yourself. Some people can, 
like the great American prophet, uh, uh, Edward Casey. That's what he did, right? He was able to self-hypnose himself down to like almost near death, right? And so, I mean, some people can. Yeah. I'm actually in transpersonal psychology and that's at the university that is based on it. Is. So I'm gonna learn a lot more about that, I think. <laughs> right, so it's like cool. sleep talk, right? It was basically- Yeah, he had to have somebody record it, right? Yeah, right. He didn't yeah. know. What he was had going no on. idea. He was, they had people like stick fingers, things in his fingernails to see if he was really, and he didn't know yeah. that much, right? He ended that trap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's sticking stuff in my fingernails while I was asleep. really alluded to the Atlantean past. I think he was one of the first ones to get to it. Yes. Uh -huh. And so it was interesting because uh, in his in his thing, he really he did work with uh, um, the ascended masters. Mostly, he worked with was like Jesus and some of these, you know, some of some of the major religious figures, right? And so I don't. You know, everybody's guides are different, but anyway. So so um, anyway, where, where was I? Um, so the idea is to get there and re and re and re suggest things and, and to kind of put a different message in there, right? And so. Uh, what's really cool about this one is um, I have everybody, prefer, the, the client, prepare questions ahead of time, send them to me, and then we talk about them and maybe reformulate them. But, and then there's two lists, one for questions, right? Why am I gay? Why do I, whatever, right? And you get all kinds of stuff, right? And then anything that's mental, physical, or spiritual things that you want to get looked at for healing, right? And you guys are going, so how does the healing happen, right? Um, so. The questions are really cool because I know I know when they're there at the sweet spot is when I'm asking the questions and the answers are coming through instead of I and me, they're coming in as she or whatever your name is. So they're they're talking through you and, and the person doesn't move at all other than their mouth. Every now and then I've had a person or two that moves their hand, but generally not a muscle moves, right? Do you have any body that's difficult to get under because i've never really gotten super deep i had um i've had two in seven years or five years whatever however long i've done it uh one was um had just taken some really she was on some pretty hefty psychotropic medication like uh clonopin or something right and she was a nurse and, and so she shows up I, after just having taken that and i was like you ain't going nowhere yeah like and so sometimes medications will limit it, right? Uh, in the class, we were taught that people with met some mental issues cannot be um, brought under, like bipolar, schizophrenia. But guess what? I've, I've, I've done all those and they've gone under. And so I think it really, I think it's just mastering it over time. Because, you know, if I had done that borderline schizophrenic person at the beginning, probably would have never happened, right? But I have gotten them there. I mean, they're they're so there. There's a I, I stick to the script and I stick to the way they do it. But sometimes when they're not going where I want them to go, right? I have other tools in the in the shed where I, I take them a different direction. We do something different, and we still end up there. So sometimes I I go off of. I try to keep it exactly like she taught it, right? Because I want to. If I'm going to advertise that I do quantum healing hypnosis technique, then that's what I want to do, mm -hmm. right? But sometimes you have to change it, right? Uh, but even if I've done, I've done simple past life regressions before, just that part, and people have gone under, right? And so it really depends on the person. But I, uh, I haven't had a no go in a long time, right? And so some people with that have really, really left brain struggle with it, right? But uh, I've, had, I've had success. Because the, the most recent one I had, that was I thought I wasn't going to be to get her under, I was doing it for her research, actually. Um, she was, in, in, in my opinion, I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but she was schizophrenic, right? She was living in multiple worlds, mm -hmm. but she went under. But the, the, the odd part about that is when she was under, she was answering the questions before I finished the question. The questions, <clears throat> I start to ask the question and the answer, they were just like, boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm gonna wait for the orange. You did say there's some things in cahoots. Just one, one floor up. Yeah. Right. Personalities do the answer. Right. Well, exactly. So the questions are really cool because really the, the thing that's nice about it is whether it's coming from your subconscious, which I think in, 
in my opinion, that haven't done this work, that it's the hub of everything about you, past, present, future, and your connection to all there is. Right, so maybe I'm just having a conversation with your subconscious, who knows? But whatever, the answers that are coming through are not of your conscious mind or you're making it up, right? So they're more pure, right, in that respect, if that makes any sense, right? And so those are really cool. I've had some really interesting answers. I mean, I had a guy that came in that was a, um, he was a woman, but he, he did the whole transgender thing. He was a guy. I, I would have never been able to tell unless he told me. But, you know, most people have, have seen, and when I ask, uh, even if they don't ask, I always ask, I mean, how many lives have, you, have they been? Have they been on other places? And this guy had been here maybe twice. I, that's very rare that I see that. And of the past lives that he went into, he was in, a, uh, in, in, in like spirit form on spaceships and all these different things. And so, and other times I have people that have lived thousands of them, right? So, did you have a question or? Wanderer spirit. Right. And so, um, and I've had, I've had uh, lives on other planets, right? Uh, sometimes people actually come out, they've been animals, right? Sometimes they've been trees. I mean, it's just really wild, right? According to Dolores Cannon, before, before y'all think that's a little weird, according to Dolores Cannon, she's, she's seen that quite often, right? And so... Ideally, the soul evolution is supposed to experience everything in life, right? So, you know, but um, I, I have had some really interesting things. So anyway, let's go to the healing part. And that's what a lot of people are really interested. They want answers to their questions. And usually it's like, what's my purpose, right? Well, and it, I almost always get the same answer. Well, they know what it is. I'm like, well, you're going to have to tell me because, you know, we want them to hear it because I record it. Yeah. So it's like they need to hear something a little bit, right? And sometimes they're real specific. Uh, sometimes they'll say things like, um, you know, your child is going to do this, this, and this, take this job, you know, these years. Other times they're like, yeah, you might, they're going to move north next month or whatever, right? So it re it's, it's interesting. I get such, and, and the personalities that come through are crazy. Sometimes I've had, um, whom we're connecting to is like super quiet and they get one word answers and I'm having to pull answers out. Other times I, I get there and I don't even get to ask questions. They just ramble and all the questions get answered, but they just talk. Yeah. And other times they're super funny. I just, one gal, we were, we were asking questions and, and, and the answers I would get would be like, Oh, this girl, she knows better. And I mean, it was just hilarious. You know, so, so sometimes it's a lot of fun. Right. Personality. <laughs> yeah. And the personality doesn't always match, right? The person, uh, which is interesting. Sometimes I get different languages, <clears throat> languages that they don't speak. Yeah. Right. Well, they don't know they speak anyway. I had this one lady that um, even when we were just talking, she was just rattle off this weird language. I'm like, I said, what was that? She goes, I don't know. That just comes through. I'm like, okay. But it kept coming in in, in the in the uh, hypnosis. I had to kept I had to remind them like ten times or so. I need this in English, please. This is not helping her or me, right? And so sometimes that happens. And uh, I do I did have one gal from Saudi Arabia that was difficult to get under because the language barrier just wasn't quite. So to, to do it, you got to be able to hear decently, and you, you need to be able to articulate. The English language pretty well, right? Now, it, this is also available in different languages, but I only know English. So I couldn't do it in a different language. <clears throat> so um, I haven't done kids. Um, I have had, I think I've done a gal who was, uh, I think the youngest I've had is like 19. But it'd be interesting to try a child one time to see if it works. But I, I don't know. Nobody's nobody's come through to ask about that. <laughs> you seen the YouTube about the children on stage? Have you seen that uh, with the hypnotist? There's a group of children about eleven, age eleven. It's really hilarious. Is it? Yeah. Would you do children? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Really funny. I recently got a um, uh, an interest in in training a child in Reiki that's ten. I'm like, sure, why not? If you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I think I think parents know if they're ready, right? And so. Yeah, I would do children, but I would I would get consent, you know, all the whole thing. Right. But um, but uh, also one of the things just on the business side, I always audio record everything, right? And so that one thing it it, it keeps anybody from misinterpreting what happened, 
Plus they can re-listen back at it because even if I'm back briefing, I am going to miss things. And so they can listen back at it, listen to the, plus they can also tell that they weren't really the ones answering this is, right? And so every now and then to some of the other circumstances I found what I've done a couple of readers at my shop. And so I found that some of the people that are, are that have gifts and, and things like that, they, they will go under and they won't move. But they're there, but they're it's like their conscious mind takes a, a side seat and just watches it the whole time. So they are they're awake. I mean they're aware, but not awake. So they don't move, it's the same process, but they they usually remember most of it. Most people don't, right? And so experiences are very I tried it myself. I was that way. I was I was I was watching it and answering it, you know, with my spirit guide. And, and so but I but I found that I didn't move. For the whole hour so i'm like okay I, I, I get <laughs> uh, but the healing part is probably the coolest part right so most recently the gal i talked about the schizophrenic lady they had um for example had issues with her cranial nerves which are the ones that come out of the base of your brain which you know anyway but it caused pain in the top of her head for like top of her ear up like her whole life she said it's unbearable all the time right that was just one of them and so um, it, it was it was really cool because when we were done, it was gone. It was gone. I mean, it went back. It came back because she went back into the same old crazy patterns, right? And so, um, in other instances, um, her daughter actually, uh, even though I didn't, we didn't ask the question. She wasn't, and she didn't apparently didn't want to talk about it. But they, they in the session in the healing part, they brought up. Well, we're not going to heal the tremors in her hands because then she's going to go back to the medical field and she doesn't belong there. And then when I brought her back up and we talked about it, she goes, oh, I really like the medical field. And I said, well, apparently you don't belong there. <laughs> right. And so I always do, even if those, even though people bring specific questions, I will always ask, take a look, have them look through the body. And in the, in the, in the, in the guy with the schizophrenia, I did that and they came back and they said, yeah, actually, she has black mold in her lungs and in her throat, and it's in all in her house. She needs to move, right? And so she validated it later, at least about the house. But we didn't really talk about this. But and so the thing is, I when I do this, I'm amazed all the time how that connection is so pure and so so um, accurate. I don't even know how you want to call that, right? But occasionally, I do get those. In the questions and in the healing, well, we're not going to heal that because this is part of her karma or this is part of their karma. I, right? I have had that come up, right? And I and I get that. And sometimes they won't ask and answer a question because they're like, she doesn't need to know that. It's not important right now, right? And so I do get told no occasionally, right? Which is fine, right? Um, but I, I've seen some of the some really miraculous things happen, and <clears throat> I think. All around, I, I get amazed how easy it is to just talk to somebody and, and, and have this happen. And so, uh, anyway, I just want to kind of give you guys a baseline of what, what that's like. And um, it's just tremendous. It's my favorite, no doubt. And so, I, out of everything I do, that's just the cream of the crop. So, uh, anyway, we're not going to make anybody bark like a dog. Um, it's so entertaining. Right. <laughs> But, but, I, but, you know, honestly, if I was a dishonest or person, I could put some, some suggestions in there and, and right. And it, there are enough of those people running around, I think, uh, right. <laughs> in this country. Right. And so when it comes to, like, stopping smoking or, or weight um, or those kind of things, they usually give us suggestions or reasons why. Like, um, like weight, for example, it's a really good thing. Uh, what, what the answer is almost always is it, it's an emotional barrier. It becomes your physical manifestation to keep you away from what's happening, right? And so, it, it, it's it's really it, it's really interesting to learn about the body through this and what's actually going on. And so, anyway, you guys have any questions or comments or that's kind of what my spiel is. <laughs> In a nutshell, you know that it's um, I, I'm amazed by all this stuff because I'm I'm like 40 going on 26 and. I'm learning so much, you know, I, I did a, a, hypno, a hypnotherapy session like last month and uh, I wasn't able to go under and I think it was probably, you know, 
uh, I've done it twice and I haven't been able to go under, but I know I can because I did it one time in a, in a, um, a setting where a person did uh, tapping along with the uh, angelic uh, invite invitation and mm -hmm. that worked. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess the question is like, how, how hard can people be? Uh, some people, like I said, I've only had two in seven years or five years, however long. It's been a while. But we don't want to be your next two. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I, 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 I've been pretty successful. I, I think what, what for me, what it, what it came out to be is um, you can't just talk. You have to learn the, the um, um, what's it, to have a, a, a melodic voice. Cadence. And, right, cadence, that's the word I'm looking for. You have to. You, I know. Just, right. <laughs> <laughs> just over time, right, you just learn how to to uh, put them under, but keep them from going to sleep, right? Because if you're talking really quietly, right? Or you let them wait too long for a question to come through, they're gonna go to sleep. But it really comes down to the voice, right? What I like about this process is you're spending three hours minimum together. So the, the whole, it's really about the trust and building up their rapport, getting to know who I am, who you are, right? And I think that's the key. And that's really what they taught as well, right? And so I don't know if I answered your question, but I think it comes down to what the process is. It does take a long time to get to, to, get to that point. Well, the actual induction and being under is only about an hour. Oh. It's the two hours ahead of time or so is, is developing, learning about you, and talking about the questions, what are you looking to get out of the session, all that, right? Up to two hours, I'll stop it for two hours. Rapport. Yes. So it really comes down to building the trust, right? And I think I always send out a letter ahead of time of preparation and, and what you start doing with your, with your spirit guides, that kind of stuff to, to start working energetically ahead of time so that when you come, you're already ready to go. I have had people that have booked the session and just walked in and it's worked, but it works better if you give people prep time, give them time. If you're putting questions together and sending them to me, you're developing your own rapport right, with, with the connection or the, or the upcoming appointment, right? And so the reason I do it ahead of time is for that, but also with the psychic and the mediumship side, usually I get most of the answers before we even go in, but and then for me, they just get validated, right? So yes, there are people that are difficult, but I've gotten really good at wiggling around. <laughs> Take them in the backyard and go to the back door. Right, because, you know, this particular thing <laughs> takes you up on a cloud and different things. Sometimes I got to use the old standard, go up some stairs, find some doors, whatever. You know, and sometimes I've had to do it several times. I think I told you that I don't visualize with that be part of the. It might be. It might be difficult. Yeah, I've not. I've not done anybody with a fantasia, so I don't know. I don't know that answer. Um, doing the past life regression, usually I'm asking um, to see what you're seeing, right? What you're experiencing now. We could try it just as an experiment. Past mm -hmm. life, you know, just went out just to try it to see what, right? Mm -hmm. To see if if somebody with aphantasia can still process something, right? I think you, you have to almost go to what you feel, what do you smell, you know, the other senses. I exactly, think. right. And so, or what the, What are the thoughts coming through? Yeah. What, are you, what are you getting, mm -hmm. right? And so, and so maybe we can just do an experiment. We don't have to worry about money just to try, because I don't know, right? Okay. Uh, and so that'd be interesting to try. Because the aphantasia thing's been showing up a lot lately. People come into my office and I'm like, talk about visualization. I'm like, I can't do that. I'm like, the first time you heard that, you thought you should me. <laughs> I know. I said, I said, so, so, so if I tell you, I want you to close your eyes and, and, and go into your kitchen and describe to me what the kitchen looks like, open the door. She said, you can't do that. And they go, no. I See, can't. I can tell you where everything is. I can feel it. Right. I don't see it. Right. And I, he was like, it was with him that I first realized. It's really seeing something. Yeah. I didn't know people were really seeing something. Well, but, but you, what you, what you see in dreams. So there's a block yes. somewhere. Yes. There's something going on that's keeping you from trusting that. It's like blind people seeing in their dreams. Yeah, know, exactly. Interesting yeah. stuff. Right. And so there's a lot of aspects and functions. But what I like about it, it teaches anything you do in in, in the metaphysical world. Right. There's so many lessons from that that come into what I do. It's just crazy. A lot of stuff we talked about in the Reiki session about what I'm finding around the body, some of that comes from having learned it there, right? Either through Dolores Cannon or just my own experience. 
that. Well, that, to me, every ology and ism that you study and you get very deep into, there's a congruity with all the other studies. I agree. Everything that is valid always agrees. And if it, that one thing doesn't agree, all these less valid. Correct. You know, with all of the same stuff. I agree. And so, um, so I did do, I did mention the research project briefly. So I, I, I was working with this gal, the schizophrenic one, or I, my opinion, um, and her daughter. And so um, I got referred by paranormal researchers to, to work with her. And so I was, my readings were like spot on. So we, they, they end up talking to me. I'm not saying I'm always right, but I was on this one, <laughs> right? And um, so uh, what they wanted to do was have me come up with some sort of treatment plan, right? And I said, well, I think we, if we do a Reiki session and then we do hypnosis on each of them, I think we're gonna, we're gonna take care of what we need to do, right? And so they actually, we got together, they did it right. They put the meters up, they yeah. did all these energy readings. And so that paper will be forthcoming at some point. That is cool. So uh, if, I ever, if I ever do get that, I'll put that up on my website. Got my card, but uh, I mean, when I get it, I should say. So I, I, I don't need validation to prove that I, what I do is good, but it'd be nice if science says, oh yeah, look at that. Well, that's the thing that I've followed a good bit when they really do a lot of getting scientific validation for what we already knew existed, but getting the validation and they, and they can't deny it anymore. That's the beauty. I know. Right. Like my son does acupuncture and you know, the meridians have been known about forever, but they just have instrumentation now that can measure it, you know? So exactly. it's electrical stuff, you know, everything's right. energy. <laughs> well, interesting, interesting enough, acupuncturists were paid when to keep people well. Yeah. When they got sick, they didn't get paid. Right. And plus they had to even probably go do the guy's chores that they let get sick. <laughs> there's some, there's yeah. some uh, motivation to keep the guy well. <laughs> exactly. So any questions? There, there's a lot of suppression of uh, acupuncture. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, chiropractic. Has mm -hmm. there been a lot of uh, suppression for for uh, chiropractic? People? Well, people like in the medical industries, you know, like they uh, and the the American Medical Association. Do they try to suppress all of this? That uh, lawsuit's you know, already been kind of handled. I think. Um, they are. Like they they are coming right. together more and more. Yeah. Right. They are because I'm, I'm also I'm also a medical person. I, I've been in the medical field for 26 years so okay. so um they're like energy healing uh, there's a this is a specific one that's accepted by the hospitals healing touch mm -hmm. yeah. you know so they know it's real right and so they're they're coming on lots of folks you know, it's it, it's folks. really the real problem in my opinion is the pharmaceutical side not so much the rest of it it's the pharmacy but i can tell you with our medical system this is kind of off topic hypnosis but if i go out there and i get hit by a semi I'd be glad to be in this country because there's really good trauma surgeons. I want yeah. them to put stuff in, take stuff out, fix me up. Yeah. But when it comes to medications, I think there's where our problem is. Yeah, that, I agree. My opinion. Sure. Right. Not, that's not scientific based. Cutting edge surgery is, is important. Yes. For, for right. Did you have a question? Yes, ma'am. No, I'm still not clear how hypnosis can help one. So hypnosis is theta state, clean state, can bring out messages uh, that we similar to the one that we get from drinks, right? So instead of drinks, we use hypnosis sessions to get messages out of Sort of, right. But we're, we're, we're contacting specific, uh, whoever it is that guides you, whatever that is, right? Spirit guides, God, right? And so it, it's not necessarily, but yeah, sort of, right? But it, it, it's, it's basically we're going to a, a source outside of us and connecting and, and asking, not just going to a reader or something like that. We're asking an energetic or a spiritual source. And how can hypnosis help us change our subconscious patterns? Uh, most of it comes from getting validation and reasons and seeing what's going on, right? And when we're having conversations, um, I also ask for if they give a strategy, right? To, the, reason, the reason you ask, like you say they answer a question, right? Um, you have high cholesterol. They will tell you how to, I always ask, well, what, what's a good strategy? What's, what's a way for them to, to, to change that, right? And they'll recommend a diet, they'll recommend whatever, right? And so it's not just answering questions, but it's, I also, that's why I talk to them, to people so long, 
is so that I can go back and go, okay, well, she says that she does this, but what's something different she can do? And so I don't know if I answered your question or not, but. Uh, right, and so, but, but it's like, look, it's like somebody looking down in their life from above instead of on the field, right? And so it, it, it's, a, it's a different perspective, right? And so with permission of the client, if, say if they have a specific issue, they want to stop smoking. We can talk about that, but I will, I, I can, before we come out, I can put that in, but I will ask about it first, right? And so I say that because if we're going to work with that person again, if we know we're going to, I can embed a keyword like whatever, blue rose, right? Before they come out. And so the next time they come see me, all it takes is my voice and that word and they're there. And so suggestions can be put in there, right? If the client wishes. So it, it, it's sort of like what you're talking about, right? But it, it's more validating because it's not coming from you anywhere. It's coming from somewhere else. But you're connected to that. You were talking about the level of consciousness, but the level above it all to me is a super conscious, Correct. which is big guys like yes. home, God or Bill or whoever, right. but all of energy Correct. is coming through to support. Correct. And so when people say, who are we connecting with? I'm like, you know, I, I, Source I, I rarely get a name. Yeah. Uh, every now and then I always ask, so yeah. what can I, what can I call you? I had to, <laughs> I got, I get some of the craziest answers. Usually they're like, we, you don't need a name. We, we're, we're just, we, we am, we are, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Every now and then I get the, the comical one that says, ah, oh, name. They can call me Lucy. <laughs> you know, I mean, I get stuff. <laughs> you know, so some people are wrapped around having a name for connection, which I get. Right, but you're right. I, I, my, my personal feeling is we're talking to higher consciousness, super consciousness, whatever you want to call it, cosmos, cosmos, all of the above, right? And so, all it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, I've known about my blogs for years, and I still don't know. I've, yeah, I've been using the mind and trying to find it, right? But you know, it's it's funny. Like you know, the more I seek it out, it seems like the more it's set in. You know, well, one thing you can look at when it comes to trauma or traumatic things in life, mm -hmm. uh, I think, I don't know if we talked about that, but you can, you can go in and try to remove them, but it's like pulling weeds, right? Yeah. You gotta right? So weeds. sometimes it's better to grow the roses up and around and smother the weeds mm -hmm. than it is to, to concentrate on pulling them out. Excellent. Right? So and so good. being aware of them is great. They're learning lessons. They're part of us. We don't have to, but if the focus on them all the time is like the, in the book, The Secret, for example, right? If, if you put some piece of that, like if you say, uh, I, I don't want to be late, the universe here is late, <laughs> right? You have to you have to put a pot, right? So you have to work on positivity and not, I mean, I'm not saying- That's super helpful, for, right? by the way. That is, I mean, that really is helpful. Just grow a bunch of flowers over mm -hmm. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like that. that. Yeah, and, 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 excellent metaphor. Right, and this I learned because this is what my, my, uh, my so I, I try to I try to learn everything I can so that it, but my um my youngest daughter this therapist said that to her because her, her mother is a um, anyway the analogy was that I was the rose part of the yeah right and she said we just need to grow the roses instead of trying to choke out the weeds I'm like okay well that makes I like that <laughs> well it always is because when you focus on the positive you don't have to go back to work on the negative right. because they, they can't stand you raise your vibe <clears throat> that negative stuff got fall away. So let me just let me let me finish up by saying uh, there's a there's a there's a simpler way to work on your subconscious programming as well, right? So so a little scientific fact, right? About 11 million bits of information per second are hitting our mind, our our, our consciousness, right? Our conscious mind brings it down to a manageable amount of 40, right? So where does the rest of it go? Straight to the subconscious. So when your mother says, "Be careful hanging out with them kids because you're going to become like they are." She was, was absolutely right. The music you listen to, the vibration of the pictures, everything that's around you, just goes straight in unchecked, right? So the subconscious is, is always listening, always pulling in. So if you want to do it, this is, a, this is not from me. This is from some of the leading people. As you go to sleep, your conscious mind is out of the equation. Put some earbuds in your ears. Put something positive to retrain your subconscious because with the conscious mind, is out, it goes straight in. And so I was bold enough to make it out of my own voice, right? I, I figured no better for me to tell me what to do than you know, I figured that would make more sense. But that's an easy, Bruce Lipton is the one that talked about that. He's a really big guy in the 
metaphysical world. He had a really good book called The Biology of Belief. If you haven't read it, you should <clears throat> really I'm read right. it. We must write that down. I'm we, a, he, he means I must write that down. Biology of Belief, it, it really he breaks it down by science, intricate, that your belief system really does create within yeah. your body and change your body. Change your circumstances. He's been talking about it for a long time, but now he's getting science, the science perspective. Yes. Yeah, that was a really important book. Yeah, did you read it? I have it in my collection. I have not got to it. Oh, you should. It's yeah, good. It's good. Cool. It's good. And so Dolores Cannon has a lot of good books. If you're interested in what we talked about today, Dolores Cannon probably explains it better than I do, right? She has a lot of YouTube videos as well. How do you spell this? D O L O R E S. And a Canon, C A N N O N. So one of the one of the one of my favorite topics by Dolores Cannon is volunteer souls. So in her research and looking at patterns, what she started to see unfold was that there was um, a call out to the universe to help the earth because of the you know with the energy and the shift and all that. And so the, the call went out to the universe and and a lot of souls that have never been here before volunteered to come. And so the first way would be more like um, uh, my father's age, probably how old are you? 73. So around your age, right? Or maybe a little bit older. But, um, but they were very unprepared. They came from a light being to a, this dense, crazy world. And they struggled with a lot of suicide feelings, a lot of different things, right? Um, and then there was two other waves, right? And so the second wave would be more like, uh, more like I would fit in is um, uh, we came in with like more prepared with like a built-in shield and so I, I don't have to like protect it's just kind of there yeah. right um, and then the third wave which is those those um, people that are they're, they're, they're more in their 30s now I think um, they came in with more upgraded DNA they came in we're upgrading they've come in upgraded and they're the ones that are like they're the ones they referred to. Super, super empathic. Yes, right. They just had but this notice. If you listen to it from her, it makes more sense. But it, it's amazing. When I read that thing, I'm like, oh. So Sylvia Brown talked about the same yes. thing about oh, yeah. the master oh, souls coming ago. in to support yes. the growth of the planet. Yes. So it's not a new idea. It's just she was seeing it happen. Yeah. They call them walk ins now. Oh, okay. Walk, walk, walk ins. ins, yeah, with a little hyphen. Yeah. And uh, there's different categories of the walk ins. <clears throat> And there's uh, literally like 10 million of one subcategory. Mm -hmm. And we're shifting. Big time. It's happening. Big time. And she talks, she talks a lot about the new earth. I She's not with us anymore, out. but she talks about the new earth and shifting over, right? Mm -hmm. So she's just one of the many, I'm sure, that yeah. talked about it. But, but, she, had, but she puts some research and numbers yeah. behind it all. The guy had, had, I had taken yeah. hypnosis track right. from Dick Sutton. He was uh, a human potential trainer and a therapist and went through all that stuff. Amazing, amazing. And and comes from everybody. The whole ARE. Oh, absolutely. Thing. I mean, yeah. I'm the knowledge has already been there, but it's becoming more available. Yeah. People are more willing. People are more it. open. You don't get burned at the, at the stake for, for talking about yeah, this. Yeah, that things. was bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't get the, well, you might get fired from the job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. You can't tell you your yeah, own Anyway, <laughs> um, so hypnosis, I mean, the Lord's Canada is not the one who teaches it. I've learned other methods, but this one is just so fascinating Resonate to me. I just, I just, this is why I'm here. Um, like a couple of the gals in there, uh, Karen Hutchins and Jamie, something or another, there's a couple of readers over there. They do, they did theirs through Michael, the Michael Newton Institute. So there's, there's plenty of high level people that do it. This one, this particular one um, costs around $1,200 for each level. Like the first level is like $1,000 to $1,200 or something. And there's four levels. I'm, I'm level two now, but. So, I mean, it, it's a calling. I just, I was talking to you earlier. It's like, I just heard the call and I just, just went with it. Right? Going for it. I heard about Reiki, I did Reiki. I heard about hypnosis, I went, I just, anyway. Hungry soul, hungry soul. Yes, anyway, I mean, that's kind of the, what the hypnosis is in the big nutshell. But uh, if there's no more questions, that's pretty much all I have. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Everybody needs to hear it from time to time. That's it, Tim. <laughs> all right guys so um if you guys are interested i'm doing a 10 percent off if you book this weekend but anyway just for future note so well i wish you well man oh yeah absolutely valuable valuable service cool were you ever in the military 
Yeah. Yeah. Retired Army. Yeah. In the Marine Corps long enough to say, I don't want to do this for the rest I was in the Marine Corps first, so I, yeah. I'm with you. Thanks for your service, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate sure. it.